All right, look there, not there, right? <laughs> Down the barrel. There you go. <laughs> 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 so traveling in Texas this week, I'm out here in Montgomery, Texas, stopped by Plain Lady's house. Plain Lady is Christine and Tyler, they're building an RV-10, and I understand in garage door number one here, we have a set of wings that are being stored and nearly done, and then garage number two, they're building a fuselage. So let's do a house call tour today. How long can your arm be? I need a 10 feet long arm. All right, so as mentioned, uh, Plain Lady here, which hopefully you guys are familiar with her on Instagram because she's like dominating <laughs> Instagram and the RV10 build, but that's how I found her. And we actually had the opportunity to meet at Sun Fun this yep. past year, so I got, a, I got a hug from her then. But uh, yeah, um, another passionate builder here. And, and uh, how long has it you've been building now for? Uh, th just about three and a half years, so. Three and a half years, you yep. and your husband, Tyler. Yep. And what made you decide to go after the RV-10, which is the most complex, I think, kit you could possibly <laughs> build in the market because it's a four-seater and it's a, it's a lot of metal, right? So. It is, it's a big plane. Um, we had originally thought about buying a different plane, actually, when we first went to our first Oshkosh in 2018, and we were all set, we were going to create a flying club and have this other plane, and then, then we saw the One Week Wonder yeah. at Oshkosh, and um, we were just really enthralled with the whole process. And it's actually funny if you go back and you go watch the time lapse, you can probably see Tyler. You're in there. In there. Like okay. several times just watching everything. And suddenly it got us talking. We're like, you know, we're smart people. Like, you can probably I think, I think this we out. can do this. Yeah. And then so suddenly it was, all right, let's go and check out the different, you know, experimental options. And we climbed into a couple of different planes and we got into the 10 and it was just one of these like, this works. Like, I like this. I think we can do this. So awesome. And there it is. <laughs> well, we're going to walk around the other project, give you some of the highlights of their experience so far building the RV 10. All right. So Christine, the, I'd like to ask everybody how they progressed through their kit and, and how did you guys get started? What was the first component or um, a sub assembly that you guys built? The vertical stabilizer was the first part. And it's funny now because looking back at the time, I remember being sort of uh, terrified, both of us, that we were going to do a bad job or whatnot. And now you look back and it's like, oh, that was so easy. <laughs> Like, what were we all worried about back then? So. And so did you build that here or did you do that some uh, some class somewhere to, to No, first? every everything's here. We did not do any classes before we got started, but what we did do is we got the practice kits. And um, I mean, that, that I definitely would recommend to anybody doing just in general, because even if you do a class, I think that having the practice kits to get to know like your own tools and your own setup and your own like workshop um it was really helpful and um helped us figure out <laughs> like different little things when you're learning like just because the rivet gun can get set to 90 psi doesn't mean that you should use it at 90 psi <laughs> <laughs> so you know it's little it's again a learning curve you're starting from from scratch but you know you do that when you're flying even right you don't get into the plane and expect to know how to fly it right away so so you mentioned sample kits are you talking about the light box kit or the toolbox kit from vans or uh, there's an airfoil kit that um we use i can grab what he to show you later but it just looks like a little mini wing with a trailing edge and everything and then they have um a couple of things where you just work with some aluminum angle and two sheets and uh what is it there's uh, i think like there's a cell phone holder you can get from like cleveland tool there's the vans light box um there's a toolbox kit that they have so there's lots of different options but i, I think it's really just about getting used to again like your your own tools and your own workshop and and practicing things that uh, i think i say it this way it's a lot cheaper to replace the practice kit than it is to replace airplane parts all right christine so one of the things i do like to, to showcase when i'm visiting doing a house call <laughs> is the unique build tables or tools or you know just the work area environment which we'll shoot all the way around here but you guys built a really nice work table on wheels and just tell us like 
30, 60 seconds about the design and you, and you building it, the construction. It was the first thing we built for the, the plane build is knowing we needed to have a good space to work on. And I'd seen a couple designs that I liked, but the big thing for me was wanting to make sure it was wide enough for the two of us to be able to work on the same side and not like kind of get in each other's way. You know, nobody works like this. You gotta have the space to sort of spread out and it's worked out really nicely to have the two of us out here working together. And this is uh, all wood construction and you got it on, on locking wheels. Yep, so it makes it really easy to move around and put it wherever it's convenient and the legs even fold up so if I ever need to just get it out of the way completely, I can do that too. Yeah, show, show me under there real quick because I think that's a really unique idea that you've got set up here to be able to collapse. Yeah, so we've got the carriage bolts that go there in the back and here, and then if this pops out, it's just sitting on there on a little metal strap. And so you can knock this out and then the legs will both fold up and it'll tuck in completely underneath there. So it acts pretty much like a, like a typical store-bought collapsible table. <laughs> it, it's it's uh, not bad for my first time building a table. <laughs> yeah, very nice, very Thank nice. Thank you. So being that you guys are building one of the most complex kits out there, uh, what was the tool investment? What does that look like for this build? Or is it pretty basic still? Um, I think, it, you know, it depends. Like, are you buying used or new? We went and bought a new, like, complete pre-packaged uh, deal. Um, and then we've added on a lot throughout the build. So all in, four to five thousand maybe on it some of it is again even as dumb as like you know we had to buy the compressor for the different tools we didn't have the air compressor or we didn't have a bandsaw or, or a drill press so there were things i was like familiar with but we didn't actually own one right so some of it's some of these you know more basic tools and then you get into all the different stuff like the rivet gun and then are you getting the squeezer and then are you getting the drdt2 versus the c-frame and um all the different like dimple dies and drill bits you know it it's a lot of different things you know even here getting the little the right angle drill here to help get us into some of these tight spots we're trying to just use the pan am there just wasn't going to work so you, you you just sort of keep adding as needed and uh and it's it's a lot but i think it's kind of a thing of you can if you have the ability to do it, to be able to get the tool that's gonna to make the job easier, which is gonna make you wanna keep building, because I think if you are fighting yourself because you don't necessarily have the right tools, that you're, you're hindering yourself, right? You're gonna get more frustrated or you're gonna maybe mess up or whatnot. So having the right tools to do everything has, I think has been really helpful. So it's, it's you know, budget to add, <laughs> add tools like throughout the process, I think. But you're talking about literally starting from zero and not ever building anything, like working with sheet metal before, so. Oh yeah, that's the yeah. thing. So, so again, like the metal snips or anything, like not having those, um, I think if you already have somewhat of a garage, you're, you're in a, a better spot. Like, you know, we have friends who already had some of the different, um, uh, like tools or anything that, that they needed. It's just for, you know, Clicos. You need a lot of Clico, so even just getting that, if you don't, you know, you don't build with metal normally, you're not going to have any of those. So it, yeah, it just sort of depends on, I guess, what you start with, and you know, going from there. <laughs> All right. Side note, side discussion. Uh, Christine and I were just talking about the tools that you want to invest in that you have to buy, and uh, Clicos came up, right? And I bought, I think, like 50 at a time. Every time I went to Aircraft Spruce online, I ordered another 50 or 100. You can just never have too many. No. <laughs> How many did you all buy the first time around, you I, said? I think, if I remember right, I think there was um, 300 maybe in the kit As that we bought. Option, yeah. yeah, that that was what was recommended. And then we added another, I think, like 100 or 200 to it. And and then we still have added to it, especially I was telling Brian when we got to the tail cone there, and now you're having to go and you're click going the six different J channels on either side and the side skins and the bottom skin and the top skin and you start going, you know, I don't, I don't need a Coleco every other hole. You know, maybe I can do one so, every so eight you, hole. So then you go to so. the, the forward part of the fuselage and you start robbing Clecos <laughs> from different areas of the fuselage to bring back to the area that you're working on. And that's a true story. That actually happens. So if you're building, you're going to be you robbing Clecos. You can never Clicos. have too many Clecos. Yeah, yeah, you can never have too many, so, so order more. So end of side note, back to the tour.
We are partnering with great companies like Dynon Avionics at Dynon.com. Clemens Insurance at ClemensInsurance.net. The Aviators Clinic at AviatorsClinic.com. Foxtrot 95, Calhoun County Airport at FlyFoxtrot95.com. Take a moment to go visit their websites at the links found below in the description of this video. And visit our website at experimentalaircraftchannel.com for events, our video library arranged in easy to find playlists on specific topics, affiliate products, aviation merchandise, and so much more. All right, so back over to door number one. So, in this garage, behind yeah, door number wings. one, is wings... And the cabin cover. And the cabin cover. Yep. So you went from, just the order of operations, the tail straight into building the wings, yes. correct? Yep, from the M kit to the wings. So, and we've got those in here because the fuel tanks aren't done. They're not mounted to the front. Since they're not mounted to the front, we don't have the leading edge mounted to the front because then it would be like cockeyed sitting in here. So those parts are all off and it's just sitting there on the spars. But the parts are, all the components are done. It's just waiting here to finish this um, part of the fuel tank that I talked about in one of my last videos where we need to drill the hole for the return line that's gonna go like right about here on the rib and not wanting to drill while it's mounted to the tank and then end up with shavings like inside the tank. So yeah, your most recent work on this and moving this over here is you built your wing tanks. Yes. So tell everybody what it's like working on this sticky, ooey, gooey, what is this called again? Pro, Pro seal. seal. <laughs> it's not so bad. It smells, oh, it's like. Cookies. Smells like cookies? Rotting flesh and farts. <laughs> what? It's like. Rotting flesh and farts. <laughs> what? It's like, I mean, it's like the most heinous smell you could possibly imagine, and that's about it. Wow. But you will go nose deaf to it, so it, it gets better, but it's not so bad. It's it's really, um, and, and because I think you get to use it a bit with the trailing edges that you work on, you know, it, you can use that to kind of as like a dry run to get used to how it works and working with it, but... It really wasn't terrible, so. So other than the stinky, fart, <laughs> flesh, eating, smell stuff, what was the uh, more enjoyable part of building the wings for you guys? Um, I think just being so much more comfortable because you already finished the, the M kit there that by the time you got to the wings, you had a lot more confidence. And then um, part, part of it, like the repetition can sometimes feel a little bit monotonous because you're doing everything twice but at the same time too it's like you get into a rhythm and so we were able to knock out some of this stuff like really quickly because again the confidence level and you already know what you're doing you're just continuing on and doing it over and over and just can really knock it out of the way quickly yeah there's lot, lots of ribs here to uh yeah. clico and, and drill into place right yep Exactly, and then with the skins and everything. So uh, actually, I, I, I joked that it was countersinking hell trying to go and do the countersinking that you need on the flanges of the spars because you're not only going the whole way down, but you've got to countersink it different ways depending on what's attaching. So you're countersinking it to receive dimpled skin. You're countering it, countersinking it to receive dimples for the screws that will attach the fuel tank to it you're countersinking it for where the access panels go on the bottom so uh it can get a little tricky but i think especially if you take the time to go and figure out like what all goes where especially at coming at it as a first time builder once i understood how everything was going to fit together i think that helped make it a little bit easier to understand why it was getting countersunk in different ways but it's it's a lot of holes to countersink <laughs> Holy Vans aircraft, right? Holy Vans aircraft. Holy there Vans aircraft. <laughs> All right, inside garage number two, where it's air conditioned <laughs> and dehumidified. Yes. We have a canoe. It's Texas, after all. So. This is the canoe stage of building an airplane. So, what is the what is the very beginning of the fuselage build? Where do you start with on the fuselage? 
Th that this is, is you unique. Know. Well, you've I don't got know. yeah a, a tail cone, yes. which is separate. Correct. Right. Then you have the forward fuselage. You so have to build this separately. Here, from here back was all the tail cone. So right here where this bulkhead is, all the way back, that was the tail cone. So everything from here forward was all in the fuselage kit, and. Gosh, I don't know, probably starting around the spars, if I had to guess. And then I remember after that, then you you built from one of them, the sport when you went forward and got the firewall and then that bottom skin in. And then you went from the aft one there and did the bottom skin on the bottom. And so that was neat to have it standing vertically in the garage. Uh, so the height clearance was nice to have the extra space there to be able to, to stand it up and work on it because it's, I mean, about, about as tall as I am to get it to stand upright, so, and sure. then have it elevated. And this is a, a typical home garage, roughly 20 by 20. Yeah, two car garage, nothing, nothing crazy about it. I, I mean, I don't know exactly the size, but I mean, there's no, there's no real, there's a teeny extra bit there for the, the work benches to go, but it fits. So it, it, it just, does. like, there's, there's like maybe two and a half, three feet between the door and you got another two feet between the corner back there. Yeah, exactly. Got some, I can still have some more room even to push it back a little further if we needed. So, so as long as you leave the, the rudder off of it for now, you should be good. Yeah. And then we should be able to even get it up on the gear. And I think we we're talking about earlier and then still be able to get it out through the garage door to wheel it out later. Uh, I think the only thing we heard from one of our friends is you might let a little air out of the tires <laughs> to roll it out. But even once the cabin cover is on, um, we should be able to get it in and out of here without any issues. So. All right, yeah, so let's talk about some of the custom options that you guys installed so far on your rudder pedals and uh, brakes. Sure, so like this is a, another great example. We went with control approach pedals. We went with Behringer brakes. We went with aircraft specialty uh, fuel and brake lines. Um, and then we added a parking brake. So this is one of these areas where it's okay hang on we're using all of these different things we're adding some stuff that's not in the instructions even as simple as with the rudder pedals um you've got the cables attaching here in the tunnel versus with the vans where it comes out through this little pre-cut hole that they've done and it attaches here to the the um inside rudder pedal on both sides so there's just different um, things that you have to take into consideration and it's just, it, you might not be working from just one set of instructions. I think for this one it was uh, three different sets of instructions that I was looking at to make sure to get everything in just right and to work around um, all the different stuff. So like we had to modify the tunnel cover to work with the, the new rudder pedals there. Uh, and then figuring out, you know, I'm hooking up brake lines for the first time. How are we doing that? And okay, now we're adding the parking brake. So that's different. And look at the Behringer instructions for how do you do that? So it, it's, it's, none of it's impossible. It's just, this is where it starts to get a little bit more, um, you can make it as hard as you want, right? I guess that's kind of the way to do it. It's like you can stick with just stock and stick with the instructions and it is uh, probably much more clear cut and straightforward. But you know, you can add all the different things that you want to customize it. It's just you know, recognizing, I guess, you know, being patient and working and being flexible with having the different sets of instructions to, to make it yours. There's, there's pluses and minuses, right? <laughs> So speaking of uh, customization, you mentioned earlier that you had an idea for the rear baggage compartment and what was that? I did. Um, so one of the, the areas that a couple people have talked to us about is being able to access the bolts to it that attach the steps here in the baggage area and that sometimes you might have to um, replace it or upsize it or whatnot and so the instructions in vans talk about putting um, a number 30 pilot hole in the bottom skin and then the idea is that then you can upsize it and and get access from underneath there through the bottom skin to get it out if you need to and so we talked about and weren't really sure we wanted to have a hole there in the bottom and so we're talking about well, what can we do on the top and because of the not only just the baggage floor but then the side panel i came up with this way for us that works 
to have an access panel on the bottom but then also on the side that now gives me access to this bolt here from up top so that if we need to take it out to replace it for some reason or if we end up needing to upsize it i can even still get in with a drill and a long drill bit and upsize it without having to go through the bottom there of the plane and for people who aren't that familiar with the rv10 what are the engine option <laughs> and yeah. and which direction did you take as far as sourcing that well it was a tough decision but we went with the one option that we have which <laughs> is uh, the io540 and um anybody who's building the 10 right now is i think probably familiar with this the kind of delay that's been with getting the the engine um there's been different stuff uh but the, the there have been just some like delays but it looks like we're going to be able to get ours uh, i think we're going to get it in may so uh we ordered it in 2021 um but we got in before the some of the different price hikes so that's great and then um yeah then at least we won't have the world's most expensive paperweight <laughs> so sometime probably in may There'll be something else here on the front of this yes. <laughs> firewall, other than uh, magic markers. <laughs> exactly. Other than magic marker, we'll have we'll have a bright, shiny, brand new IO540 here that's actually going to make the plane a plane. All right. So how I found you, Christine, was on social media and specifically Instagram, which you are uh, very active on there. So what made you decide to get insta into Instagram? And then how has that uh, worked out for you the last couple of years in building? Um, as, as far as the community goes and stuff like that. Yeah, I started with my YouTube channel first and uh, starting Plain Lady and then added the Instagram after. I think the Instagram has been the easiest way uh, to stay uh, more up to date with where we currently are in the build since the videos take longer to put out and they're not up to exactly where we are that uh having instagram and having that instagram account is a nice way to kind of keep and keep up with where we currently sit but it's been it's been fun to to share everything and again meeting a lot of different people on there but the whole thing for me was was plain lady was trying to help show that there's you know women out here doing this too and it's i'm not just tyler's helper you know being the one kind of helping actually do a lot of the different building but i am excited because we've talked about it and that i'll have the repairman certificate for the plane and so i think that that's really cool and it's been really fun getting to to share that and i think it's really nice too when i hear from different people that you know maybe their wife or their daughter or someone who maybe wasn't so excited about going out and doing it has gone out and now started helping and getting more involved with the plane and realizing hey this is pretty fun so 